Because I don't think Sri Lankans will ever forget the happenings of 1996. In terms of picture-perfect finishes on the biggest stage, it's difficult to beat Mahendra Singh Dhoni 6 to win the 2011 World Cup. As far as moments of pure catharsis go, it's hard to look beyond Arjuna Ranatunga's cheeky nudge through third man that put Sri Lanka on top of the cricketing world. In two months, they went from minnows visiting Australia to World Cup winners. In those two months, they were accused of ball tampering, their young off-spinner was publicly crucified, and their own country, all decked up to co-host the World Cup, had been deemed unsafe to play cricket in. The scorecards will show that Sri Lanka's 1995-96 tour of Australia was one-sided. The scorecards won't tell you how nasty things got. In the first test at Perth, the Lankans were accused of ball tampering, which they vehemently denied. The ICC dropped the charge a week later, but things went downhill very quickly. On the second day of the second test, a young Mutaya Murulitharan comes into the attack. Umpire Darrell Hare standing five yards back from his usual position, calls him for chucking seven times in three overs. In the Melbourne Age the next day, celebrated writer Peter Roebuck made his views clear in an article titled, No Subtlety in MCG's Day of Shame. Cricket has permitted the public humiliation of a player, he wrote, adding, this was a day of empty triumph and personal sorrow. As if the chucking controversy wasn't enough, towards the end of the series, there were whispers that Australia would not be traveling to Sri Lanka for the opening match of the World Cup due to security concerns. Rumors that are eventually confirmed following a bomb blast in Colombo. Ranatunga, increasingly irritable and combative, makes a bold statement. The moment that Australia said that they weren't traveling to Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka got the two points, Arjuna said, we want Australia in the final. Now, there weren't too many teams in world cricket going around saying, bring on Australia. But Arjuna had the guts to, to say that, bring on Australia. Ranatunga's words aren't pure bravado. He's a man with a plan, with resources to back up that plan. Fiery openers, experienced middle order, and a spin-heavy attack perfectly suited to subcontinental conditions. It's the evening before the final and Ravi Shastri and Ian Chappell have been assigned to interview Ranatunga and Shane Warne respectively. And when, by the time Warne came to me, he must have heard something from Arjuna's um, interview. And he said, what's that fat so-and-so said about me now? He's called me a media myth. And I thought to myself, hello, Arjuna's in their head already. This is the sixth edition of the Cricket World Cup. The last five finals have been won by the team batting first. Ranatunga wins the toss and puts Australia in. The move seems to have backfired as Australia raced to 137 for one. Into the spotlight steps Aravinda De Silva. Mark Taylor and Ricky Ponting are in fine touch when De Silva comes on to bowl his floaty off spinners. Taylor top edges a sweep to fine leg. Ponting is bowled, trying to cut one. Later in the innings, Ian Healy is bowled through the gate. Lanka's batting legend has dragged his team back into the final with ball in hand. Sri Lanka need 242 to win. Just like in the semis, Jayasuriya and Kalawitarana fall early. Just like in the semis, De Silva steps up to the plate. He doesn't smash it all over the park like he did against India. This is a more controlled innings, one that leaves nothing to chance. He ends up with an unbeaten 107. Gurusinga plays the perfect support role and Ranatunga finishes off the job. The captain was never going to let this slip. Not after what he and his team went through for two months. 
So we are winning the World Cup is a special memory <laughs> rather than anything else. <laughs> This was a powerful statement, capped off with a gentle nudge to third man. A win forged in fire, sealed with a kiss.